So myself, Dr. M. Maheswar Rao, uh, Civil Engineering Department, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. So our course name is Fluid Mechanics and the topic is Pascal's Law. Course outcomes, that means after completion of the course, the students will be able to know all these things. That is the course outcome. So under this, CO1 is uh, students can be uh, know the definition of the fluids and for their properties and surface tension at different conditions. So this knowledge will come under the course outcome one. Similarly, Newton's law of viscosity and uh, problems based on this Newton's law of viscosity, soil classification, that is classification of fluids based on the Newton's law of viscosity. So will come under the course outcome two. So then, course outcome 3. So it is the capillary rise or capillary form. So that means if we insert a small diameter tube in a fluid, the fluid will rise. Some of the fluids will rise in the small diameter pipe, which is called the capillary rise, and uh, some of the fluids uh, will fall compared to the top surface of that fluid, which is called capillary part. So this knowledge will come under the course outcome 3. So then course outcome 4, surface tension. So any fluid at the outer surface there will be a tension so which is called the surface tension. So and these applicable applications will uh, it is it will come under course outcome 4. And uh, capillarity and compressibility. So, compressibility is a better term because of compare and compressibility means the change of volume. So, if you apply a certain pressure, how much volume it is changing that particular fluid. So, gases and liquids. So, water will be considered as incompressible fluid, and whereas gas can change their volume by applying an external force. So, that's why. It is a gas is called a compressible uh, compressibility and pipe flow. So, any uh, fluid, if you allow to flow through the pipes, maybe gravity, maybe force. Okay. So, there will be a friction development between the surfaces of the pipe and the fluid, and uh, energy will be lost after traveling certain distance. So, these by flow or fluid friction, so all these things will come under the course outcome 6. So today's topic is Pascal's law. So what is Pascal's law? Why should we learn this? All the details uh, and derivation part also will come under this class. So here the definition, you can see the definition here, an external pressure is external pressure that means if you apply externally any pressure or a confined fluid. So what is a confined fluid? That means it will uh, not have any source to go out. So that is called a confinement. So if you allow freely to flow to any direction, it is unconfined fluid. Confined fluid means you take any vessel or a closed vessel. So if you have fluid in it, which is called confined, because we the fluid cannot go outside from the, because it is occupied, this total vessel is occupied with the fluid, so whatever the external pressure is applied, so it, will, it cannot go outside, which is called here confined fluid. So according to this definition, if you apply an external force on a confined fluid, so pressure will be increased through the fluid here. So the pressure increase cannot be at a singular line or one way direction or two way direction. So through the fluid, the pressure will be equal. That is the definition for the Pascal's law. So here, the important words are external pressure and confined fluid. And the because of the external pressure, so there is increase in pressure 
throughout the week by P. So here Pascal's law principle. So if you take the principle of the Pascal's, so you take a lake. So a lake means what? So it will there will be a water. So it is a lake. So this is a lake. At rest. So normally reverse the water will flow. But whereas in the lake, water is at rest, stagnant condition. So if you want to know the pressure at a depth of H, so here the H at certain depth, so maybe at the bottom or at the uh, middle of the lake, uh, at certain depth, any depth in the H. So if lake is like this, so if you take any point, so this point I T is H with respect to the top surface. So then what will be the pressure at the at that point at the certain depth from the top surface of the fluid? The formula is here P naught plus rho G H. So where whereas this P naught is the atmospheric pressure. So atmospheric pressure means what on the earth over the top surface of the uh, liquids the gases will be there, atmosphere, atmosphere. So you have to really have some attraction. So that is called, uh, because of the atmosphere, certain force will be applied onto any object, maybe liquid, maybe anything on the animals or plants, or it may be. Pressure will be applied by the atmosphere. That is called atmospheric pressure. Here also, the lake will have some pressure pressure will be applied at the top surface of this, which is called atmospheric pressure, that is the P0. So then, uh, this rho GH, so rho GH means what? It is related to the liquid. So here, H is the depth of the point from the top surface of the lake, G is due to expression due to gravity, and rho is the density of that particular fluid. So, Water will be the fluid at certain depth of H. If you want to know the pressure at that point, it will be equal to rho GH and less atmospheric pressure. So, by means of this formula, you can understand density is constant, G is also constant, but H is not constant. As you increase the H value deeper and deeper, what will happen? So, pressure also will be increased because P is equal to rho G H. So, if H is increasing, pressure is also increasing. So, in addition to that, atmospheric pressure also increases. So, that's why the pressure at any point below the surface of the lake water surface at the depth of H, the formula, the pressure at that point is equal to P naught plus rho G H. P0 is the atmospheric pressure, rho GH means density of the fluid at relation to gravity, which is the depth of that point from the top surface of that fluid level, that means lake water level. So, you go to derivation part. So, what is the definition here? The definition is telling that pressure is seen, okay, if you apply pre pressure the same pressure will be applied throughout the fluid. So that means in x direction, y direction, z direction, the pressure must be same according to the Pascal's law. So that derivation we are going to know. So you can see this. So wedge shape, so what is the meaning of wedge shape? Fluid element. So fluid element means a small uh, element, very, very small element or fluid element. That element means very, very small dimensions. So that means it is a dx, okay, dy, ds, okay, like that, dx, dy. So very small dimensions. That's why it is called element. Here it is what is called a wedge shaped element. So wedge shaped means this is a wedge shape, okay. So this like this triangle portion and this length is one, one unit, okay. So, this is the wedge shape element. So, element means what? It is dy, the depth is dy here, length is dx, and diagonal length is ds here. Okay. 
So uh, that is the first one. Consider the wedge of medial rotational figure. So let a dx dy dz. Okay. So here dx dy ds or dz are the lengths of the sides. So for this edge, so length is all the lengths. That means this uh, this is vertical direction length dy and horizontal uh, direction is dx, and this inclined uh, distance length by length of the words is dx uh, ds. Okay. So like that here dx dy dz or ds are the lengths of the sides of elements. The small element of the fluid wedge element, a uh, lens different lengths of that uh, wedge are dx, dy, and ds. Okay. And also we are having w here. Okay, w means what weight of that fluid. So whatever the weight of the fluid in that small element, that weight is called here w. So it is the weight of the fluid element which is perpendicular to downward direction. In which direction w will act? Because of the, the gravity of the air, the weight will always adds downwards. So that is the W. So here, this is the pressure into force. Force is equal to here, pressure into area. So here, pressure is equal to force by area, force by area. So where force is equal to pressure into area. So that's why here this is dx is the pressure dy into 1 is the area of that side. That means a b side dy is the vertical direction and this length is called 1 unit. So this portion okay, so that area is dy into 1. So pressure is px. So if you multiply px that means the pressure in x direction and the area is dy into 1. So totally if you measure, pre, multiply this pressure into area, you will get the force. So the force in x direction is this one, that is equal to px into dy into 1. Similarly in y direction, the force is equal to py, that means the pressure in the y direction into delta x into 1, that means dx. And uh, here in the diagonal slope length, here also same thing. So, Pz is the pressure in the z direction and ds into 1 is the area of that particular element. Okay. So, like this. So, this portion area. So, that area ds into 1 into Pz. So, you get the force in that z direction. We can see here theta. So, what is the theta here? We can observe here. This is the theta. This is also a theta. So, angle made between weight of the element. So, this is the weight. Okay. Weight of the element and the face BC. Where is the face BC? This is a B. This is a C. So, this face. Okay. This face is a BC. And this is Y weight W in vertical direction. So, this is the angle theta. So, whatever it may be. The angle made by the weight of that which fluid element and the face we see that angle is theta here. Now uh, here also it is uh, same theta angle. Okay. Let Px, Py, Pz or the pressure acts normal to the corresponding forces. So we already discussed these pressures. So Px, Py, Pz are the pressure acting normal. So, this is normal, 90 degrees. Here it is 90 degrees. Here it is 90 degrees. Okay. So, the pressure is acting normal to the surfaces. Maybe in the P A, Px is in AB, perpendicular to AB and Py is perpendicular to AC and Pz is perpendicular to BC. So, now if you see the derivation, so, upon drawing free body diagram of the shape fluid element, following forces acting on the element. So, free body diagram. What is the free body diagram? It is nothing but the symbolically lines of the forces. It's a line with the force, which is called a 
body body diagram so you can see this four diagram here nine diagram okay so this is pz this is theta theta this is px dy into one this is px dx into one this is pf pz ds into one this is the line diagram and pressure forces acts normal to the places so you already know this the pressure will act normal to the places so for a b phase it is a perpendicular and ac force this py is a perpendicular and this pz is 90 degrees or normal to the this inclined bc so that is the normal to the phases and force due to weight so weight also will act but it acts vertically downwards and if you see the derivation the force on the phase same okay so how will you get the force i already told you force is equal to that means pressure is equal to force by area so force is equal to pressure into area so pressure is equal to so line ab means here you can see the figure so it is a px line ab it is px into area of the phase ab so pressure into area pressure into area the formula so px is the pressure area of that ab is dy is the vertical so this is the dy from here to here it is dy so in this direction it is unit weight that's why one so dy into one so pressure px into dy into one similarly on the phase ac so you can see here ac so this is the ac a and c okay pressure is py and this dimension is dx here dx from here to here dx in this direction it is so px into dx into 1 so the forces on the bc so where is the bc here bc is inclined line so this inclined line is pc so here it is pz is the pressure and the length from b to c is called ds okay ds and in this direction it is 1 so that's why the force on the BC is equal to PZ into DS into 1. Okay. So on the phase AB, PX dy into 1. On the phase AC, PY dx into 1. And the phase BC, PZ dS into 1. So on the weight of it, weight is equal to mass into acceleration due to gravity. That is the weight of it. I will get the mass. Mass is nothing but see here density rho is equal to mass by volume. Mass by volume. So you want here mass. Mass is equal to density into volume. So that's why mass is here density into volume. And this is acceleration due to gravity. So, I will get the volume of the wet gel main is nothing but the half BH. So, this is triangle, this is AB, AB, AC. So, triangular formula is half BH, half into AB into AC. This is the area. In this direction, it is 1. So, that is why that is a volume. And this is the rho G. So this is rho, this is g, and volume is of bh into 1. Rho is the density of the fluid. And uh, in order to maintain the equilibrium condition, so how will the fluid will get the equilibrium condition? So the forces should be equal in all the direction. So in my x, in my y, in my z. Now we will calculate the Forces in x direction, force in y direction, force in z, z direction, they must be equal after derivation. So now we resolve the forces. So here the word is there resolving 
x direction. So what is the meaning of the resolving? So some forces are there like this. Any forces, if you make them horizontal, so that means if you put the here theta, it is pi. So this is, let us take this is uh, a, this is b. So then now if you resolve x direction, that means we are converting the inclined forces into horizontal forces. So this is a cos theta is equal to r minus, okay. See, let us take this b, b cos pi. Otherwise, a cos theta minus b cos pi is equal to 0. So, that is the resolving the forces in Aryan direction. That means here it will come like this. So, similarly, you can also resolve the forces in vertical direction. That means the forces will become like this. I will get this uh, vertical direction. So, in the same figure, a sin theta is equal to b sin pi. So, other words, a sin theta minus b sin pi is equal to 0. So, that is the meaning of resolving the forces. So, we can resolve the forces in x direction or we can resolve forces in y direction. That means all the forces in vertical direction only. Maybe we don't want it, may go forward. Okay, similarly, Resolving forces in x direction means the force can be act towards the right side or forces can act towards left side, but in other direction. Or you can also put in the inclined direction also. Okay. So here in the first step, what we are going to do here, x direction, we are resolving the forces. So see here px dy into 1, this first portion a b. Okay. So this is already acting in x direction. And if you take this vertical uh, perpendicular line, so it will be 0, it will become 0, sin 0, 0. That's why it will not come, but inclined force will come. So, if you know this force, okay, if you know this, then you put this Pz ds into 1 into cos of this angle, then you will get the horizontally towards left side. So, I will get this angle now. So, it is a theta, it is a 90 degrees. This is also 90 degrees. That means this angle is 90 minus theta. Okay. Then this also will become 90 minus theta. Then that's why uh, the force in this z direction, z1 on the plane, okay, so it will become minus because if you resolve like this, direction of force is towards left. This is towards right. The force in x direction this heavy portion is in the towards right direction and this ds it will act towards the left direction that's why opposite sign that's why here it is negative sign okay px dy into 1 minus p ds into 1 sin 90 minus theta so this will be sin 90 minus theta so this pz okay so this is Pz here for pressure. So Pz ds into 1 into psi 90 minus theta is equal to 0. There are no other forces. So there should be system should be in equilibrium and it is 0 here. So then if you summarize this Px dy into 1 minus Pz ds into 1 cos theta. So how you got cos theta? Psi 90 minus theta will become cos theta. That is equal to 0. So, from the figure, you know that ds cos theta is equal to ab. So, this is the ds, okay. So, ds, here it is a theta cos theta. So, then I will draw here. This is the theta. So, bc. So, bc or ds, okay, into cos theta, okay. So, it will become like this cos theta. Here a cos means here 1 into cos theta. So that is equal to 0. So ds cos theta is nothing but the y. So because it is in y direction. So ds is this one. If you put the cos theta it will become vertical direction which is nothing but the ab. Okay, ab that is nothing but the dy. Okay. So wherever ds cos theta is there you can put ab 
are also you can put dy. So px here dy into 1 minus pz ds is there. So ds instead of ds cos theta, ds cos theta this one. Okay, ds cos theta you can put the dy is equal to 0. So then dy dy get cancelled px is equal to pz. So we have got the pressure in x direction r is equal to the pressure in z direction. So next uh, we have to apply for, we have to use uh, derive, it is also equal to the y direction. Now x and z directions are equal, we have to again derive in y direction also. So similarly resolve the forces in y direction. So if you want to prove that, we have to resolve the forces in y direction. That means all the forces acting vertically. So it may be downwards, it may be upwards. So here px dx into 1 minus bz ds 1 minus cos theta minus dx dy. Here it is py. Okay. So this portion. Okay. I clear this. See here, this is a py. So this vertical direction, resolving forces in y direction is vertical. It is already in vertical direction upwards. So py into dx into 1 minus. So this if you resolve this pz, it will become like this. That means downwards. This is upwards and pz will act downwards. That's why minus sign. So pz into ds into 1, uh, 1 into cos 90 minus theta. So if it is theta, then how much is this? This is 90 minus theta. So if you put the uh, cos 90 minus theta, it will become vertical. Yeah, cos 90 minus theta. And uh, vertical direction w also there. So this one is the w. Okay. This pressure force is py, the pressure force is pz, and also weight of the wedge fluid element. So that is equal to dx dy by 2, that means all bh into 1 into rho into g. So rho g into volume. So you can get from this py into dx. So py into dx, 1 is negative here, minus pz uh, cos 90, 90 minus theta will become sin theta. So ds sin theta minus dx divided by 2 into rho g. But ds sin theta is equal to dx. Okay. See here. So if you put the, this is the ds, we simply end there. So if you put cos theta will become vertical, you put the sin theta will become argument. So that's why here at ds, ds sin theta, you can write ds sin theta plus dx. So that substitute that px, dx, pz, ds, <coughs> is it the ds in the cos 90 minus theta, ds sin theta, that is equal to dx, which is equal to 0. So from this, we can see py is equal to pz. So in previously, we have derived here, P x is equal to P z. This one. So now we got the derivation P y is equal to P z. So then what you understand? So P x is equal to P y is equal to P z. Okay. Now what is the meaning of this? The whole equation shows that pressure at any point in x y z directions is equal. So what are going to be the direction, maybe x direction or y direction or z direction, the pressure is same. So this is the Pascal's law derivation. If you see the applications, okay, we have derived that in all the directions but there is same, but where will you apply it? So you can see the examples here, hydraulic brakes, hydraulic jocks, forklifts like that. You can see the figure here, okay. This is a, a um, brake. Okay, so if you apply a brake, then here brake will be applied under the vehicle. And this is also same thing. Hydraulic brakes. So if you apply a brake like this, force, so then this pressure will be applied 
vehicle will stop. This is the uh, application of Pascal's law for the hydraulic brakes. And also car lift in service station. So you can see here, if you apply a small force of gear, then huge force can be lifted here. So for example, if you take 1 kg, if you apply, here it can apply 100 kg. So that car will be lifted easily by manually also. So you can see this because force by area is the pressure. So here force by area, force let us take this is 1, area is equal to A1 is equal to 1. So 1 by 1 is equal to 1. Whereas here A2 by area, okay, that means uh, F2 by area, F2 by A2. So we will find out the area of F2. If the A2 is 100, then what will happen? 1 by 1 is equal to F2 by 100. So F2 is equal to 1 by 1 into 100. So F2 is equal to 100. So if you apply 1 kg here, then 100 kg will be applied here. So that car will be lifted, which is based on the Pascal's law. So it's only the difference in the area of this cylinder and the area of this one. Okay. If it is small area, if it is bigger area, smaller area, if you apply smaller load, uh, big carry force will be applied, generated, okay, until then, bigger diameter of that, of wheel. And also this one. So if you apply a small load here, so more force will be applied here because the area of this one, this one is different, 100 times. So you can see here simply by pressing with leg, one leg, the whole car will be lift. So if you uh, review what Pascal's law, the definition, okay. So it is nothing but the external force on the compliant, confined to it, the pressure will be increased equally throughout the fluid. That is the definition. And the, according to the Pascal's principle, uh, the pressure at any depth H in a lake, which is at rest, the fluid at rest, the pressure at any depth H is, uh, is equal to P, is equal to P naught plus rho G H, where P is the atmosphere pressure, and rho G H is the rho is the density of the fluid. So, G is the acceleration due to gravity and H is the depth of the point on the top surface of the fluid. And if you see the derivation, we are taking a G shaped fluid element, this one. Okay. And the lengths of all the sides, dx, dy, dz, dx of the element. And W is the weight of the fluid acts perpendicularly in particular direction. And also theta, it is nothing but the angle made by the weight, this is a weight with the inclined uh, length uh, portion, inclined portion BC, that is theta, so then here also it will become theta, okay. Then Px, Py, Pz are the pressures applied normal to the air. The AB surface is Px, AC surface is Py and uh, uh, BC surface it is Pz. And free body diagram, free body diagram is nothing but the a line diagram of the force size and the weight shaped element. <coughs> so pressure is acts normal to the faces and weight will act downwards. And this is small derivation. Okay, force is equal to pressure into area. So Px is the pressure, dy, uh, dy into 1 is the area. So similarly on the face AC. Okay. It is Pz into area. Okay. Then I uh, will get from this the weight of the element is equal to mass of the element into rho. Mass is equal to volume into rho. So here volume is equal to R into B into H is the, this is the area of the triangle and one unit in the particle direction. So that will become volume. So rho into G. So rho is the density of the here. Sigma fx, sigma fy, sigma fj is equal to 0. So there is all the forces in equal direction. Is equal to all the forces in y direction. Is equal to all the forces in z direction. Is equal to 0. 
that means some uh, vertical direction it is acting like this sum is equal to 0, origin direction towards left, so it is right. So, this x direction will be zero similarly, f z. So, collective the forces in actual directions. So, if you calculate this, uh, forces resolving horizontally, we will get Px into Px is equal to Pz, and similarly, resolving forces in y direction, you will get if Pz, uh, Py is equal to Pz. Hence, you can, can come conclude Px is equal to Py is equal to Pz, that means the uh, uh, pressure in x direction is equal to pressure in y direction, that is equal to pressure in z direction. So, all the directions. Pressure is equal, so it is proved. The Pascal's applications are hydraulic brakes, uh, jacks, uh, lifts, uh, all those things. So, these are the examples. So, it is smaller uh, uh, area of this fluid surface, if you apply smaller load, is a higher area of the fluid surface, you get higher force will be generated. So, that with simply force applied input here, output will be more force will be generated. So, part will be lifted. So, here also the same thing. Okay. So, here there is simply one leg if you apply force, it's total so many huge weight of car will be lifted. Because here fluid volume area is surface area is uh, smaller, and here surface area of fluid is higher. The references are K. Subramanian theory and application of fluid mechanics, Strato Media Hills 2012, and Modi P. and Anderson say hydraulics, fluid mechanics, standard book of Thank you. Like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.